Hey everybody, this is TJR. Last week, Disney announced that their live action remake of the 1998 animated film Mulan, originally scheduled for a March theatrical release, will now release on September 4th on the Disney Plus streaming service. Now, unlike Hamilton and Artemis Fowl, Mulan will not be included in your monthly Disney Plus subscription. If you want to watch Mulan, you will, of course, have to be a Disney Plus subscriber, but it will also cost you an extra $30 in order to be able to watch it. This will be more akin to purchasing a digital copy versus just renting it. Once you pay your $30, you can watch it as often as you want. If you unsubscribe, you will lose it, but I don't see this as really an issue because eventually the film will become part of the content that every Disney Plus subscriber uh, has access to. So if you ever do unsubscribe, when you resubscribe, you'll be able to access it at that time. Essentially, you're paying $30 to have early access to it before everybody else, and because you can't go to the movies right now, and who knows how long it's going to be before any of us can go to the movies again. Now, you might be saying to yourself, you know, I don't care about this film, and I'll be honest, I really don't care about this film either. I'm not too big on these, you know, live-action remakes of their animated films. And some people are already exclaiming that this signals the beginning of the end of movie theaters. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to go that far yet, but I do see why this is creating some buzz on the internet. I do understand that if this experiment, for lack of a better word, is successful, and if it's wildly successful, I can see this being kind of a game changer and how it could change how movies are distributed in the future. Now, of course, none of this is new. Universal has already had a similar success with their release of Trolls World Tour. The COVID-19 pandemic meant the film only received a very limited theatrical release, so Universal released it the same day for digital rental. Uh, not streaming in the way that they're doing with Milan, but for digital rental. This decision paid off as the film set several streaming records, including becoming Universal's most successful day one rental. And its success led to Universal announcing that they would be looking into doing more simultaneous theatrical and streaming releases. This, of course, made movie theaters very angry. Uh, the AMC theater chain announced that they would no longer distribute the studio's films. Uh, of course, this was before the pandemic forced AMC to shut down their doors altogether. So what happens if this is wildly successful? Well, nobody can predict the future and neither can I. But I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that if this does really well, more than likely, the next film that Disney will release in this fashion will be Black Widow. This is the Marvel Studios prequel film starring Scarlett Johansson. It was originally set for release back in May, and it has now been moved to November 2020. In addition, I can also see Warner Brothers releasing some of their highly anticipated big blockbuster movies in a similar way using their HBO Max platform. Both Disney and Warner Brothers are in a unique position because they both have two very successful built-in audiences with their streaming services. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, isn't it kind of outrageous to charge $30 to all their subscribers? I mean, how many of them are going to do it? And I think uh, what you have to think about is that a film like Mulan, while it doesn't appeal to me, it attracts the family audience, which is a huge and very profitable audience. And at $30, if you have a family of like three or more, this is a no-brainer. I mean, you're getting off so much easier spending $30 to have it in your home and for your kids to be able to watch it as much as they want once you do. Uh, you're getting off real easy. In fact, I'm quite frankly surprised that Disney didn't do this first with Hamilton. I may not care about Mulan. And I'll be honest, as much as I like the Marvel films, I'm not spending $30 for early access to Black Widow. I'm just going to wait until it comes to the service you know, in, this, in the fashion that all their other films do. Uh, but Hamilton, when you think about how much tickets for that show cost uh, to go see a live performance, um, I would have gladly 
paid, you know, 30 bucks or whatever, you know, reason would be reasonable to be able to see that. I know my partner would too. We'd both say, yeah, let's, let's pay for this. We want to see this. This is, uh, you know, this is getting off real easy, but instead they gave it to us all as part of the subscription service, which was a real gift. But even if this is hugely successful, could it radically change the entire movie theater distribution system that has been the norm for so long? I read an article in Forbes where the uh, the writer said, "Well, I, you know, I I don't I think this is just a bandage for them right now because they need to make up some of the money, a lot of money that they've lost that this pandemic has created. Uh, that the amount of money you make from movie theaters is just too great, you know, once everything gets back to normal again. But one thing you have to consider is that Disney doesn't have to make as much." releasing a film like this on Disney Plus and then charging a special additional premium for it as they do in theaters because they don't have to pay a cut to the movie theaters. There's the fact that this could also drive subscribers, people who subscribe to it just so that they can uh, have uh, early access to a film like this. And there's a high probability that Black Widow could do the same thing. So what happens after... The pandemic is over. We have a vaccine, life gets back to normal, and movie theaters are, you know, open and available for business again, and people aren't afraid to go to them. Well, even if this experiment is wildly successful, I don't necessarily see movie theaters going away, although there is the possibility that their role might be in some way diminished or greatly changed. Right now, the best possible predictions we have uh, are that movie theaters won't reopen until sometime around mid-2021. TJR from the future just cutting in here. As I was editing this video, I saw the news report that some AMC theaters in some locations are going to reopen next week. Uh, when I say reopening sometime next year, best prediction is I'm referring to the pandemic is over with. Uh, we are back to normal and we don't see any risk of spreading a pandemic by going to a movie theater. Okay, back to the video. And when they do, even if the Milan Video On Demand is successful and it fuels similar releases, Disney could still re-release this film and others that they do the same thing with into theaters after the fact. Because there are going to be people who want that theatrical experience, even after seeing it on Disney Plus. And the same could hold true for Black Widow and other large blockbusters from Warner Brothers like Tenet and Wonder Woman 1984. They could get released early on their video streaming services. You pay a premium, of course. And then when the theaters reopen, they could then re-release them in theaters. They probably won't get as much audience as say, if it had never been released on, on streaming first, just went straight to theaters first, they may not get quite that large of an audience, but I do think they will probably get an audience that wants to see it in the theater. Also, uh, there is just something about the movie theater experience um, that is so hugely embedded in our culture. Going to the movies is such a traditional date night. It's a first date. It's a date that long-term couples have with each other, married couples have with each other when they have date nights. I don't want to romanticize it too much, but there is something about that communal experience of sitting in a theater uh, with a lot of other people and you're all experiencing the same thing at the same time. That is, of course, so long as you don't have some moron sitting a couple rows in front of you who won't stop talking. A while back, uh, I was watching a video on the Red Letter Media channel and they were talking about just how tired they were of going to movies and having it ruined, having the experience ruined by a couple of jerk heads who think that this movie theater is their living room and don't know how to properly behave in a movie theater. And you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever seen the TV show Firefly, there's this great line where one character tells another that there is a special place in hell reserved for child molesters and people who talk too loudly in movie theaters. I know myself, I've gotten into a number of confrontations with people who won't shut up during a movie. And so because of this experience, uh, one of the commentators on Red Letter Media was talking about the fact that he hopes that he sees the day when 
a blockbuster film like the next Star Wars chapter, when it comes out, instead of going to a theater, you'll just pay, he, and he threw out the number $50, to be able to have it streamed onto your 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 big screen, you know, TV, uh, with your theatrical sound system, and you just invite a bunch of your friends over and have a party, and they each chip in, you know, you get you get uh, you get five friends to show up, they each pitch in, you know, ten bucks. There's your fifty dollar price tag. You know, the more the merrier, and you have a party, and you watch the latest big blockbuster Star Wars movie in your own home versus going to the theater. So yes, I do think there is some potential for change here. I think that after this pandemic is over, we might see a very different landscape insofar as how movies are released. At the end of the day, of course, it's all going to be about the numbers. But I'm curious to know what you think. You know, maybe you don't care about this film, Mulan, but there might be other huge films that you do care about. And let me know what you think. Let me know. Uh, you know, would you prefer to just pay a premium to have it streamed into your home. And then of course, if it's a, on a service like HBO Max or Disney Plus, you can then rewatch it as often as you want. And you've basically not only gotten the your experience of seeing it in the theater, but now you have the digital copy that you can watch whenever you want, just as if you'd gone out and bought the Blu-ray or DVD. Let me know what your thoughts on this. Let me know if you think this is something that you would prefer over going to the movie theaters or would you still rather be able to go to the movies? I'm curious to know what everybody has to say. As always, if you like what I'm doing, be sure to click like, subscribe, and smash the bell notification icon. And if you want to give that extra bit of support, please go to the Patreon page. Patreon supporters receive access to select videos. They receive early access to select videos. And they get exclusive Patreon content that is available nowhere else. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you all stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.